see. Okay, this is old cow. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about product placement as it pertains to the entertainment industry, or actually entertainment feature films and television productions. Yeah. It, it, I, you could actually do it in web series in and, web series. Actually, and you plays. And plays, and plays. It's just product placement, you know, is universal today because a lot of people, they actually, they need every little thing that they can get. A lot of times it's just, it's free stuff that you can get to populate your stage with. But, um, it also works on radio too. It works on radio because they basically talk about what they, you know. I've got this. I've got this bottle of such and such. Then, you know. Oh, well, I'm not. You know, we're not allowed to smoke on. Oh, we're not on television. We're on radio. So. <laughs> well, yeah, but you're not allowed. We're, I got this bottle of burp. Well, you're not allowed to do that. Until we're on radio. No one can actually see me doing it. <laughs> so, but they do do that. They talk about this stuff all the time because, I mean, honestly, well, it gives them something to talk about too. We're going to go back to the fact that I've been, I've been, you know, I actually am old. I've been in this industry since the 19, you know, in front of a television camera since the early 1950s, back when they were asking this question, how can television survive? How do we advertise in television? I mean, um, I was working in local television in Los Angeles, and like one day, they, they were horsing around and they were doing a dog food commercial. So somebody threw the can of dog food into the scene and the guy grabbed, oh, look at what we've got today. My dog really loves this product and they're going on like that. So the next time that they were on, they threw him another product. And the guy basically goes on and on. You were doing commercials, you saw how the television industry started was by product placement. Well, and sometimes you call it sponsorship too. No, but, it, but no, they didn't really have sponsor sponsors in those days. Mm -hmm. And typically what they mean, di what's different is product placement is placing a product typically within a scene. Sponsorship means you sponsor the vendor sponsor, but you may not necessarily see the product. Well, yeah, because what they were doing had no relationship to the shows they were doing it. These were things that from another thing, and they were just tossing them at the guy and the guy was like that. And he got to where he was good, you know, boom, you know, like they tossed things into him. And they were people were paying to have their products thrown to the guy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's product placement. They started out as commercials, things for commercials for other shows, and then they did it like that. And it sort of spread. You started seeing um, people paying to have their products smoked. People mm -hmm. like Kellogg's on, you know, the, the Beverly Hillbillies. Products that they were eating on. You see it, you see, today it's prevalent. They're basically so much product placement that the government is basically telling people like us, you got to tell people these glasses are from another company, yeah. We're, we're, we're product placement. Or that the, company, the glasses are being provided to you. Yeah. Okay. Now, a lot of times when you're watching television shows, they are, if, if you pay any attention, they are absent of large logos. Yeah. And the reason why is because it's advertising yeah. in that space where they could actually charge for it. So they actually go through a lot of effort not to have logos on it. Yeah, and then um, another thing, you know, they've tried to be generic, you know, like a, a, a bottle, a, a drink bottle that has nothing on it or, a, or an alcohol bottle or a beer bottle with nothing on it. But um, placement, though, there, we're, and I talk about there's got to hold pitfalls that people fall into, both the wealthy and the non-wealthy when it comes to product placement. Mm -hmm. I actually, we know, I, I saw one last night, I was watching the Fifth Element, the thing is full of product placement for McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But you think, well, what's the pitfall there? Well, the pitfall was, it's set in the 23rd century, and everything has to be designed for that, so it costs you extra money to oh. design the products to look like they're 23rd century. Wait, which means, if you have a large company such, such as McDonald's, they thought, oh great, we're going to be included in the movie. They didn't realize it might include all this redesign of packaging. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we, we were actually, uh, was it not this year, but last year, we were at the BMW press conference mm -hmm. When they were doing, you know, they had people from Mission Impossible there and they're talking about the pitfalls of product placement. It was an enjoyable pitfall from all the publicity they got out of it, but it wasn't what they originally thought it was going to be Well, like. and sometimes um, the positioning or how the product is being used evolves, right, during the discussions and during the movies. But in um, Mission Impossible, they knew that the car would be involved, but they, what they didn't realize is that they'd be shipping the car all over the world. I don't remember how many different oh, countries they went to. The guy said it was <laughs> everywhere, and it wasn't just one. It was a series of cars that were identical, mm -hmm. and that's a pitfall because, as Ronald Reagan says, trust but verify, which means when you when you when they're talking to you about putting your product in the production, 
Ask them, you know, oh, you mean uh, we have to supply something that looks like it's 23rd century? Oh, we've got to supply a half dozen vehicles and not yeah, one? Yeah, versus you're thinking you have maybe to supply two cars, right, for one country. Yeah. Well, no, instead you find out you have to supply six cars that have to be flown. Now, and part of it is when this came out, these I think they were concept cars. They weren't even yeah. um, current models. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you, instead of you don't supplying have two, them. you have to supply maybe six that have to be yeah, shipped all around the world. They have to jury rig a whole bunch of cars mm -hmm. to look identical that really aren't the same model but look good enough on camera. But And then um, a lot of what people understand, on our side of the thing, you get products to basically destroy, damage, use, whatever, and the people on the other side, you, what did you do with my product? Mm -hmm. Well, we used it. Well, I didn't mean for you to use it. Well, that's the whole thing, because, I mean, for instance, well, you can get hit by clawback on the products. Well, you know, for example, we were at a gifting suite last week, and so I was given something at the gifting suite, and they actually sent me an email a couple days later and says, after you use it, please send it back to us. And I'm thinking, Use you it. never the, use it because it's you, like this item was under fifty dollars. It's like I really didn't want to spend the money to ship it back to them. Yeah. So, um, so and part of it is it's, we're not really into like promoting a company and then spending our resources to ship it back. For because that. it's not something that is worth shipping back to begin with. It's something you use and then you throw away. But mm -hmm. they wanted to return. This is what you. You know, like I said, we've been at it for eight years. This is the first time we ever had somebody oh, asking for a product to be what? returned. Generally, they give us, the, you know, like if they want us to use it on camera, we use it on camera until we damage the thing and can't use it well, again. Well, and, you know, the only other time is what? You're loaning, you're borrowing a gown to wear for well, but the red carpet, okay, okay, right? Let's put it so in. you know in advance. If you've got a $1,500 gown, you know that you're not keeping the gown. That's right. You know you're giving it back. But uh, <laughs> still, they, they loan you these things. These are like television shows, movies, stage, all these things get these products to be seen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the bigger the production, the more unlike. Okay, I remember working on a production where the women all grabbed the gowns that they got from the New York designers. Mm -hmm. Well, but first of all, they didn't care because all of them had been cut for the people in the movie, mm -hmm. so therefore they were worthless. But can you imagine, okay, you, you know, um, because I can tell, you know when something is going back because on the back, if it doesn't fit on the back side, they put clamps on the back of you to tighten everything up to make it look tighter. Mm -hmm. You know, that gown, that dress gown, whatever it is, is going back to the people. Mm -hmm. So basically you have to act different in it. You, you know, okay, the people on the stage know it's going back, so they try to avoid anything they damage it. <laughs> That's right. So, but um, like I said, though, it worked both ways. That Most of the people in front of the camera and the people behind the camera actually have to get together and talk about how the thing's going to be used. And sometimes, oh, and actually when you talk about how things are being used, is because sometimes in the spot, um, some companies just care that it's pictured, yeah. right? Some want you to talk about it. Some are concerned about how you talk about it, right? Yeah. And you know, part of it is, is like, okay, let's just say if you're on Funny or Die, yeah. okay, you watch videos on Funny or Die, you have an idea of what it's going to be about. It's going to probably be satirical, comedic, right? It's not going to probably sound like a commercial because it's Funny or Die, yeah. right? Versus something that's in a television show, yeah. Which could be, I mean, I've seen some with Gibson where I'm like, golly, it sounded like a Hallmark commercial about Gibson. Yeah. Whereas other ones, it's just like, hey, can you go get that guitar, you know, or I da 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 whatever. And it's like, they could show the same product in a totally different light depending on the character and how the character's going. Yeah. And then also, that we, we, we actually, we, uh, first time I'd ever seen this, that we were at the National Products Fest, uh, the next at National Expo. Products Expo, and I was talking, they, they had one huge display after another display all over the place, and people thought they were full of merch, full of, you know, natural product stuff. No, they were empty because the companies are now, because of product placement, are in the business of supplying dummy looking products. And they're supplying them by the tens of thousands for trade shows, mm -hmm. which are also used on television, motion pictures, theatrical stuff, because if you're not actually going to use the product, you, uh, an empty box looks as, just as mm -hmm. good as a box that's going to be used. So mm -hmm. those are the things you need to talk about. Because well, I, I, I talked to the people there and he said, yeah. He said, we make our living supplying products to trade shows and to television motion pictures mm -hmm. and things. They're dummies, all of our dummies. But you realize what they're spending to make a dummy? That I know. Looks exactly and some like, of the products, you might as well just do the actual You might product. as well send them the stuff, go to the shelf and send it because... Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it just you know, if you have money to throw away, that's what you do. If you have no money to throw away, you know, you go. Over if you have no money to throw away, you probably shouldn't be involved. Yeah, you in go it. over and said, you know, it's, you go over and get a, uh, you know, you know, you do a dummy version of of the mouth, of, you know, of Herbie. Herbie, yeah, well, that's Grandpa Daddy Herbie. But um, but they would do it. They would basically. This is the company I was talking to that would give you a Herbie that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, but doesn't it cost the same amount to turn the box out with something? Well, yeah, but that's not our problem. Yeah, I mean, it, and I, I'm almost thinking that it may actually cost more to do it because, see, usually if it's a normal production, yep. there's a manufacturing reduction cost yeah. because they produce so many in that run. Yeah. When you're producing dummy ones, which, it's which a special are short run, run. They're shorter runs. And they're treated exactly as if they were the original, except. It's done on an entirely different line because there's nothing dropping into the boxes. And, and the other part is you have to pay attention that that is the dummy run yeah. because yeah. you don't want to get them confused and okay. ship somebody dummies when okay. they're selling the product. Okay. Here's this. How much difference do you save in the cost of doing a Herbie with the squeaker in it versus a Herbie without the squeaker in it. You're saving the cost of the squeaker, but it's costing you exactly the same amount of money to produce the thing. Well, more. actually, it could cost you more. Yeah. It puts all the special handling. I know. It. So, I'll put Herbie back up again. Monty so. gets to command when we do that. But no, but, um, it's just, um, big or little, they all have the same problem is that nobody actually does their homework. Mm -hmm. Totally. If you did your homework, the people here will tell you exactly what they want to use your product for. Mm -hmm. Don't assume that something is going to happen. For instance, uh, I mean, we got stuff, when, uh, to be honest, when we're doing things on, we actually have our own channel, folks. When we're doing things on our own channel, we'll populate the scene with a lot of stuff that aren't really necessary for it. And uh, everybody knows that it's being there. You're never going to test the things. Well, you don't open them. Here's the other part is sometimes the company, if it's an independent production or smaller production, or even a larger one, they don't know exactly how they're going to use it. But if you give it to them and you're including it, they will make a point of using it. Yeah. But the point here is that if you put too many restrictions or make them give you too many details, they're not even going to use your product. No. They won't. Do it. Yeah. That's why communications is very, very important. And there's... The, uh, I know it's always something to change. Yeah, but you just it's something to change. Idea. And the fact is, okay, the product placement companies really do. They get, they make the money. They make, they work hard to get your products placed where you want it to get placed. But they also charge you an arm and a leg to do it because they're in business to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you go in, well, I, I love this. The other day, I didn't get, we didn't get our money's worth from, from the product placement we did with you, and you know. And they're, like they're suing the guy. It's all over, you know, all over the internet. Oh Tell yeah. You. They're suing the guy. He, he had he, signed an endorsement deal. Yeah. With the company. He would promote their product, you know, which is because I mean I saw him doing the same thing with other products. Who oh, he didn't. He wasn't the champion, so he we're not going to get our we're not going to you know like they give him a, they give him a, a toy to play with for the some x amount of time, and then they they not only wanted the toy back, they wanted money for the toy, to, you know. So those are the things that he couldn't understand it because it we have a contract, you know. But the that somehow the people that created the toy didn't understand that it meant. You know, I'm going to use it, and that's how it's going to get promoted. That's how you get it promoted. Well, and but that that is all dependent upon him being the world champion. Well, no, it shouldn't have depended you, upon you, being a world champion. You can't guarantee that because he's just as famous in second place as he was in first, mm -hmm. and it, it didn't. I mean, like the guy, he lost it on the last day of the season. Oh. And they and, and because well, he's not champion. We've got to, we've got to, we did, so they're doing a clawback. So it it really irritates production companies and performers that are doing placement endorsements to have clawbacks done on them. So you need to talk uh, this over with people that they both sides totally understand well, it and most of them don't. Think about it. Here's a perfect example is the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. They do these commercial in, commercials in advance and they think this guy's got a really good chance. And so they do these commercials with these guys which they think are going to win at the Olympics. Yeah. Well, if they win at the Olympics, their commercials are val valid. If they don't win at the Olympics, their advertising campaign is not nearly the same. And placement can get you in trouble in sporting events. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, you do a product placement with an athlete, he's wearing a wristwatch that's not approved of by the, by the league. He's wearing tennis shoes that are not approved of by the league. Clothes that are not approved of by the league. 
And somebody should be telling, before they go after somebody for doing all of this, somebody should, there's a lack of communication between everybody because, you know, here should be telling you here that you can't do what you're doing there. Well, and sometimes they're not thinking about it because it is for the league. I mean, we've been at gifting suites where people have said, I'm sorry, you know, it's like I'd love to talk to you, and they just pass it, and it's like we can't talk to you because they're like in some pageant that has a sponsor, and being represented with the crown, they can't be pictured with another swimsuit. That's right. I mean, it was very, which the people yeah. couldn't understand, but we do understand that. Yeah. Uh, or you can't wear, well, you know, they're, you know, well, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't do these heels because I have another company. Actually, we know a woman that basically was doing, uh, she was doing product endorsements mm -hmm. without realizing that her, that, you know, she was paying for her beauty pageant thing with endorsements of products and then realized that she was in violation of the beauty pageant's rules by endorsing any product that mm -hmm. weren't, you know, I mean, flat out, any product was a violation mm -hmm. of the rules. So that's all a lack of communications. And it, it has nothing to do with lawyers. It has to do with somebody's not talking to somebody. Yeah, and, you know, and a lot of those agreements are set, set in stone beforehand. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, what does that have to do with product placement? An awful lot. Yeah. <laughs> because, see, part of it is, is you maybe want to be in something, but if they've already got the agreements in place, you can talk till you're blue in the face. It's oh. not going to do any good. I mean, I was on a television show mm -hmm. where basically, okay, the show was a comedy. They made light of everything. The people that did the placement threw a fit. Mm -hmm. They were making they were making fun of our product. Mm -hmm. Well, they said, yeah, but did the sales rise by a ton? Well, they were making fun of our product. Mm -hmm. I was also in another uh, thing a long time ago, a movie I think called The Hucksters. Um, they made they it, they moved a the product along mm -hmm. by uh, by making it you know having the people talk about the product. That's not how we do business. That was not promoting our product the way we wanted. When you showed this, you weren't showing it, you know, the way we wanted it shown. And, they, and yeah, but we put it in all of these things. Well, we didn't give you permission to put it in these things. Mm -hmm. So like the guy finally well. F you, and that was at the end of the movie. You know, just I'm not going to do this business anymore because you gave him, you gave him exactly what they wanted, but you didn't give it to him the way they wanted it, so they sued you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a fun thing? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and like I said, the the biggest thing on product placement isn't placing the product; it's communication between the people with the product and what the other people that want to use the product are doing. And everything else is negotiable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can negotiate the money, but you need the absolute, it's the number one thing. Find out what you're going to use the product for and how it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. That is the number one thing. We're going to give you a whole list of things about... Uh, we're going considerations. To be talk, considerations. We're going to be talking about this, we're going to be talking about gifting suites, we're all going, which is gifting suite is product placement. Mm -hmm. You're putting your product in front of a lot of different people. And a, a gifting suite is a phenomenon that didn't exist when I was working full time as a performer. Because then what happened was the studios would give, you know, that they would basically, well, I, I want Clark Gable to be seen wearing my shooting jacket. So they'd basically bring shooting jackets for everybody to pick up. Like a, it'd be like tables. You walk by with a bag and you, oh, here's a DVR. Here's a, here's a, here's a you know, a, a shooting clays gun. You just sit there and pick them up because that was what we'd done. That, you know, instead of gifting suites, the studios just had these god-awful big rooms where they'd have an event. Bring every people that that they you know like the big shots in. I got to go because my my grandmother was a big group supervisor. My father was second unit director, so I actually got to go in when I was a little kid. I go by and they'd say, "Okay, uh, what is what can the little man use?" And my father said, "Yeah, he can't use that." Mm -hmm. And my grandma he can't use that. And they'd look up at what the hell can I use? I made certain that I had the things that my mother approved of. But this is how it was done in those days. You, just, you know, you walk by, you put them. We had the same bags. You see major stars, you know, with a big over-the-shoulder bag, putting stuff in the bags that the studios had collected for them to walk off with. And then what would happen was you'd see, you know, like, can't tell you, like, that major star, he'd go. And that would be it. They'd take a picture like that of him holding it. Or, you know, or the woman, she'd basically, you know, she'd pull, you know, she'd wear, you know, Mm -hmm. To really give them the tight shot if she was a sex thing. Or, oh, you got shoes and they mm -hmm. do that. That's how they did, that's how they paid for the product placement. Because everything you were, everything that was there had been seen in the movie mm -hmm. or something that people worked on. Instead of people stealing it, 
which is what they do in the business. They made certain that the products that were seen on the screen, that's everything is called the mezzo scene, everything is seen. They would make certain that everything there was available, like at the wrap party, so that they could go pick up pieces that had that actually might have been working. Mm -hmm. Most of what you show up behind you is never working or in front of you. They'd have working things for people. Oh, I remember the first time I saw that stuff from um, one of the movies. I think it was 007, and I actually saw the things that were used in the movies. I'm going, that doesn't even work. Yeah. It's just like a prop. Yeah. It was, it was like so disappointing. It's just like because, you know, the dash was the, just looked normal because they put it in with a computer, and then they just saw the outside. I'm like, it's just a prop. Oh, God. I mean, they did do in Western because, I mean, mm -hmm. Um, we did, uh, we were doing a western, you know, a low budget thing, and they, the company that basically was supplying firearms, at the building firearms, wanted their guns to be seen, so everybody got, I mean, we had some really great looking guns, we were playing with them, and then, uh, there's only one problem, <laughs> none of them worked. They were all dummies, and we actually, we actually, the product placement sort of got, a, we had a bit of problems, because this is what would happen, get in a big scene, go, bang, bang! Bang, 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 and then they say, don't do that, movie thing, don't work. And then they, you know, the star would come out and it got, bang, 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 and they said, don't do that. And then the guy, that, the people that supplied the guns from the firearm company, they're making, they're, they're making fun of our guns, and the star said, bang, 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 <laughs> yeah, like we're making fun of the gun. That's why it doesn't, when you do, when you give people props that don't work, sometimes actors are not nice. But they're playing, and sometimes those silly, silly things. But the toys, the, the okay. triggers didn't even work on the guns. Sometimes those silly, silly things um, are what make it in, and they just really make yeah. It they, work. Those guns all went back, and when they came back, the next time when the guy wasn't, no, he left with his toys. They had actual working guns, so when you go, you draw boom, it would go fire. Uh -huh. They wanted, they didn't, you know, if they weren't gonna go boom in a western. I mean, uh, it, it, it is. Oh no, God, it just. But this, like I said, until our next thing, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be harping about a topic that is very popular in industry, and we know a lot about. So until next time, this is Old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.moneybubble.net on the net or our commercial news site, which is www.mbnnewsvideoweb.com. And wherever you're watching, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you once again for over hundreds and hundreds and millions of links on the internet. And come follow us on Twitter at Monty Bubbles. Oh yes, and we're on Facebook too, on Monty Bubbles Network.